YouTube 13. Feet, feet, feet. Scanman has been and gone and overall out of 1,674 ewes, only 34 were barren. So since these sheep have not conceived, they are not giving the farm any income. They are just eating away the finances and giving nothing back. Therefore we sell them straight away to save grass for the ewes that are in lamb. So the inland ewes are far enough into their pregnancy to withstand coming through the sheep pens and having things done to them. So this batch of sheep are some skinnier or lame sheep which need a bit more TLC. So they are coming in today to have their feet done. The dogs hold the sheep whilst I go to stand on the road and turn the ewes into the sheep pens. It's a nice sunny day and all is going well with the dogs being rather steady. That sheep there which is dropping back from the flock, that is a sign that something is wrong with her. The dogs haven't put a lot of pressure on her, yet she is not keeping up with the rest of the flock. And she's not hopping lame. So that's something to look out for when moving sheep. Now ideally you need to mark her while she is separated as a reminder to treat her when she runs through the sheep pens. As often such sheep will recover and get their breath back as such and then be unrecognisable. So we've been a bit quick for this ewe and she's decided to bolt. I mustn't be in the mood for a rugby tackle today. So the ewe shoots past me, but the dogs get her back. So we're using the combi clamp today, which the ewes aren't too keen on running through. And the dogs are a bit confused by too. So time is wasted pushing sheep up when you're working alone. Now all of the sheep were ran through the clamp and every foot was lifted and treated if necessary. So I'm not expecting these feet to be too bad. But again, every foot is picked up and checked. So when doing any job, make sure that all you require for that job is at arm's reach. So I have a table of goodies. My sheep aren't long enough to stretch the length of the clamp, therefore I have to move them forwards and backwards to do their feet. So front or back feet first doesn't really matter, but I find sheep easier to move forward rather than backwards. But if I need to inject a cue, I like to have access to her back leg muscle. So it's handier for me to do front feet first, so she is in a position to inject if necessary. So as I've said, these sheep's feet have been done before. The foot condition we have a bit of this year is cod. So as you can see, I did this used back feet first, moved her forward to do her front feet, then I needed to inject her, so I had to move her back again. So I'm wasting time. So this injection is intramuscular, so I inject it into her back leg muscle. And to keep needles clean, I always put the cover back on. So this ewe is all ready to go, but I move her forward to lock her in the clamp, whilst I fetch some more sheep up, as ewes run better if they can see other ewes. This ewe is a bit reluctant, so I apply that pressure that I was on about to the top of her tail. So COD, which stands for Contagious Ovine Digital Dermatitis, uh, starts from the top of the hoof down. So it's often hard to treat in the early stages concerning foot clippers. So I often have to wait until the condition is more developed to then trim back the hoof and expose it. There are many feet conditions affecting sheep and ways to treat them. So I will have to do a separate YouTube on lameness, or several, come to that. With cod, I tend to remove the entire shell of the hoof, exposing it. I then apply green spray, which is an antibiotic aerosol. I expose it because in my head, it's like a cut on ourselves, to an extent. If we put a plaster over it, it will take longer to heal, compared to if we let it breathe, as it were. Also, in a way, by removing the shell, it makes the foot more tender. So the sheep is more inclined to keeping it raised and out of the mud to allow it to heal. So by doing sheep's feet before the tup goes out, they should be then on all fours by lambing time, as you don't want lame sheep then. Why? Well, lame sheep lie down more so the udder isn't as 
as available to feed her lambs. And if lying down more, it can then increase the risk of mastitis as the udder may get more dirty and infected. So there's not much to do feet wise with these sheep today. A bit more green spray is applied. I feel for heat in between the toes as this is a sign that infection is starting. So as a precaution at this time of year, anything that has hot feet gets an injection of penicillin. To move a sheep backward, I apply pressure around her nose and chin. If a ewe isn't lame on her feet, yet her hooves look a bit too long or curling, I tend to just trim a bit off to make them look normal, I suppose. But you do have to be a bit careful not to trim too much off, as you can then make her lame. So you'll notice that these sheep have many different spray colours on their wool. This is because previously I would have marked the ewes according to what treatment they received. I'm not marking them again as they are all going into the same field, therefore I will refer to them as a batch. This is for my management records and by law you need to be able to recognise such treated ewes as medicines have withdrawal periods which is a set amount of days that prohibits sale of the animal into human consumption markets. So an individual mark is needed or a batch. So as you can see, the sheep run well if they can see others. When working with this machine, I always click shut the back gate as if the following you decides to run against it whilst your head's down. Doing feet, it's going to hurt. So there's a brief introduction to feet and feet problems. And this is an issue to all sheep farmers. So doing their feet now will be the last time they are done until weaning time, unless a you is hopping lame.